they would drink the, the juice of the wine and they would eat the bread. And Jesus, you know, after they finished eating the juice, the, the bread, the juice, he said, listen, he goes, something I want you guys to always do in remembrance of me, I want you to do this right here. And it's an ordinance, and it, it's something that our church has done ever since the time in that upper room. We come together as a body of Christ and we remember what Jesus did because we won't forget what Jesus did. And so, some leaders are going to come forward right now to help me do this. And, and if you guys can come forward this time. And it says in Scripture that we're not to take this lightly. It says that, you know what, if we have some things that we're holding against people, we need, to, we need to think about those things before we partake. We need to forgive. It says we need to consider our ways. If there's things we're doing that we shouldn't be doing, we should say, you know what, Lord, we shouldn't be doing this. I repent, I'm sorry. I want to change. And then as we do that, then we're supposed to have a period of reflecting, of reflecting on all that God did for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to do right now. <coughs> if you guys would pass out. Can you put three chairs up here? Put uh, one right there and then uh, two over here. In Scripture, there were two more things that happened. Two more things that happened the week before Jesus died. They're very significant things. One of those things I'm going to talk about more next week. But this week I'm going to talk about one. And it's in John chapter 13. I won't hold you much longer. Like uh, Elizabeth Taylor said to her seven thousand, I won't hold you long. <laughs> I steal that joke from somebody else. I need to let you know. This is what I want us to think about this week. So one of those bowls right there. One of those bowls right there. One bowl right over here. Jesus, you have to remember, he knows it's the last week that he's going to be alive. But there's still some really important things that he wants to teach his disciples. Some really important things. And one of them is this idea, the closer they got to that triumphal entry to Jerusalem, the more, they excited, the more excited the disciples got. Why did they get excited? excited? They were excited because they thought they were about to be in power. They thought they were about to be the rulers. You know? And Jesus wasn't talking about power. He was talking about power. He wasn't talking about being a ruler. He was talking about ruling. And they didn't get it. And he, he had to teach them. He had to say, listen. He said, this idea of power, this idea of being great into God's kingdom means that you're the least in God's kingdom. The least. And in John chapter 13, he says this. It says, it was just before Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, that he showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served. And as the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. And that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. So... Here you're eating dinner, you're just kind of hanging out, and, and Jesus, he takes, I'm just kidding, I'm take everything off. He, Jesus, <laughs> he took off the shirt, and he took this towel, and he wrapped it around him like this. And you can imagine, they're eating just like, what's he doing? What's he doing? Now, they'd seen people do this many, many times before. But he couldn't be doing that. Because it was custom. Whenever you received a visitor back in those days, what the custom was, the custom was to wash the visitor's feet. Did you know that? It was just the way it was respect. They'd been walking a long way. They were dirty. They didn't want their house to be dirty. So they would wash their feet. So Jesus goes over and he puts on his towel. Like, What's he doing? What's he doing? 
So he got up to the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. And that, after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, you got to wash my feet? Jesus says, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter says, no, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And so Simon Peter said, then Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has a bath, had a bath, needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. Verse 12, when he had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes on and returned to his place. He said, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Blessed if you do them. This idea, this practice of washing feet, it's a matter of saying, you know what? I esteem you of greater value than myself. I'm not sent here to rule over you. I'm not sent here to be better than you. I'm sent here to serve you. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you gotta be the servant of you get those. You gotta be the servant of all. If you wanna be great in God's kingdom, you gotta be the servant of all. Have you ever heard that before? And it's this idea that we serve. Do you understand that? Now, I want to do that this morning. And it's going to be awkward. It's going to be embarrassing. But I want my three deacons, three deacons here to come up here and sit in these chairs. Ooh. Come on up. Now, you have to understand. You have to understand. I want to, I want to tell you about something right here. There's something called pride. You know that pride is running more churches than anything else? Here's kind of what pride looks like. This, and I, I tell you what, you point, you point a finger at somebody, how many fingers are pointing back at you? One, two, three. Right there. You want to, you want to hear a, a something I struggle with? I'll do anything for anybody else. You need money, if I got money in my pocket, I'll give you what I got, I won't even ask for it back. You need to borrow something from the house, I'll give it to you, I won't even ask for it back. But if I need something, Will I go to somebody to ask for it? No. I won't do it. I won't do it. Deacons, by their very nature, are servants. They're not sent to rule over anybody. They're not sent to have power. They're not sent to, they're sent simply to serve. If there's anybody in the body of Christ that needs healing, part of their role is to anoint them with oil and prayer for them. If you're sick in the hospital, they're supposed to go visit you. If there's some kind of strife at home, they're supposed to then see what they can do to help. They're servants by nature. And so for a servant to be served is a hard thing. It's a difficult thing. Okay? We have Dan, Papa Joe, and Ron. They didn't choose to be deacons. It chose them. They didn't say, I don't want to be this thing major. God, at some point, went to them and said, this is what I want you to do. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what Jesus did. I'm going to set the example. And I'm going to watch their feet. Not because I have to. Not because it doesn't feel weird, because it will. But just because I love them. And I don't even know them like you know them. I know they're hard. I know the only thing I need, I call Dan. And he makes sure it's done. I call him Sunday morning. Most time I do. So I need this, this, and this, and he gets it done. I know his wife has a hot chocolate waiting for me every time I walk in on Wednesday night. I know that all week long he works on that website. The first time they, they asked me to be the interim pastor here, I went on the website. I said, 
good Lord, this church must be 5,000 people. This, this website's amazing. And that's what Dan does. All week long. Ron, he serves. He cares. He prays. He's here every time the doors are open. Anything that he can do, he does. He and his family and his precious wife, their whole life is about giving back to God and serving. It's about serving. He was a famous race car driver at one time. He didn't have to do this stuff. But he didn't esteem the praise of man over serving his God. And so that's what he did. And Papa Joe, he's just a lover of people, isn't he? And it's, he cares. And he loves. So here's what I'm going to do. And here's how we're going to do this. We're just going to take about five, six, or seven minutes. However long it takes. I'm going to ask my brother back there to play something on the CD there. He's going to find something for us. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I want to wash each person's feet. So you guys need to take your shoes off and take your socks off. This is hard for them. But here's the other thing I'm going to do. Maybe something a little slower, a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> a little bit slower? Joe, need something you can dance to. I'm just kidding. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give the example. And any of you that feel led, any of you that feel led at all, to come wash one of their feet. And all you're going to do is you're going to take a towel, you're going to dip it in the water, and you're simply going to wash their feet. And you may feel led to say thank you. You may feel led to say, you mean more to me than you know. You may feel led to just say, I love you. I appreciate you. Whatever you feel led to do or say. And if you feel led to just stay in that seat, you can stay in that seat. You won't hurt my feet. If I'm the only one that does it, I will pay God. Your turn. If God needs you, and you may be used to do one of them or all three, I don't know. I want to take some time and I want to do that. Because that's what Jesus did this exact week, some 2,000 years ago. Just come as you feel that. There'll be towels here to dry your hands. 